Hello, folks, and welcome to Real Estate q and I'm your host, Greg Delane, and today on the show, well, my show, you know what my tagline is, experience is the difference. So I always bring in experienced people on our real estate show, and we talk about things concerning real estate. I am so pleased today to have this gentleman on the show. He's a hard guy to get on your show because he stays busy. Uh, his name is Rich O'Donnell, and we're going to talk about taxes today. But before I get into that, let me read a little bit about Rich and his background. Uh, he's got 28 years of public service, including terms as a tax assessor for the town of East Chester, the village of Tuckahoe, and the town of Mount Pleasant. Welcome, Rich, to the Thanks show. Thanks very much, Greg. All right. Uh, real quickly, uh, let's get to some of the questions that I have on the show for you. What do your property taxes pay for? Greg, the taxes pay for municipal services, whether they be your local jurisdiction, such as your uh, highway department, the police department, the fire department, of course, um, as well as school services. So everything that you enjoy as a local taxpayer effectively is paid for by the property tax. Okay. All right. I got to ask this question. It's not even on the paper, but I remember some of the people that I send my mailings out and they want to talk to me about their taxes. And, and it's usually older people my age. The kids are grown. They're out of school. And they say, why am I paying so much for school taxes? My kids don't go to school. Well, the property taxes, nothing to do with anything but value. The property taxes ad valorem. So whatever the school budget is must be uh, apportioned to all the taxpayers based on their individual assessments. It's their share of stock, so to speak. And therefore, the only thing that matters in terms of uh, payment of taxes is the market value of the property. It doesn't matter whether you have one child in the school district, zero children, or ten. Uh, it's the value of the property that will determine the amount of taxes that you will pay for the school, the town, the county, the city, or any special district. Okay. Now, now, Rich, the 28 years you were in the business uh, doing taxes uh, at, at, at Tuckahoe, uh, East Chester, and Mount Pleasant, you're a nice, pleasant-looking guy, man. You're a handsome guy. I mean, uh, did you have a ton of people coming in there a little... Uh, little peeved and uh, upset with you? Not as bad as you think. Most people think assessors are daytime Draculas, but that's really not true. Assessors are simply trying to make it fair. Many people believe that if an assessment is raised, that there's more money gained by the town, the county, and school, and nothing could be further than the truth, further from the truth, rather. Uh, so if your assessment were, were doubled and you were suddenly paying twice as much as you were because you've built an addition or you've made some major renovations, uh, that increase in taxes all else being equal will be uh, cause a decrease for everybody else, a very slight decrease. So an assessment increase does not bring in any revenue. A decrease does not cause any loss of revenue. It's simply a zero-sum process, whereas the budgets are apportioned amongst the taxpayers using that assessment as your fair share. Does, does this guy know what he's talking about or what? This, <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm at the town and, and I'm trying to... And he's explaining it right on the number. All right. How do properties get overtaxed? Well, in, it, it's... Maybe a, that's not the right way to well, ask Well, it, it, it is. Overassessed might be a better way of putting it. Um, uh, properties are supposed to be assessed at their fair market value. In Westchester County, uh, many of the assessment rolls are obsolete, not due to local assessors or politicians' faults. It's just been many, many years since there's been a revaluation. Revaluation, although being talked about now, is a very, very difficult process, and it has its own uh, issues and obstacles, which they're trying to, to sort out. So we wouldn't have time to get into that issue right now. But the reason it's, it's obsolete or inequitable, as I should say, uh, is because the assessment rolls are so old. Uh, market values change, and obviously in different areas they change at different amounts, mm -hmm. uh, and not every property appreciates or depreciates at the same level. So you can imagine that if in East Chester, for example, the assessment roll hasn't been updated since 1941, that there are certainly going to be inequitable properties. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unfortunate, and maybe someday they will fix it. However, uh, it's, it's, it's part of life now in Westchester County. Three municipalities are at 100% of value, and those are the town of Rye, the town of Pelham, and the village of Bronxville. 
those municipalities have far less inequities. It's subjective, so there will always be people paying too much, people paying too little, mm -hmm. but in those municipalities it's relatively equitable because they've done a revaluation and they've kept it up from year to year to, to trend what's going on in the market. How often do they do these revaluations? You're saying those rye... Uh Pelham, Pelham and the Village of Bronxville. Uh, they don't do a revaluation every year, but what they do is they keep values at 100% by by trending. Ideally, they would do a reval every five years, and in the interim period, they are tweaking the property values up and down as as mar mar market values go up and down, so as to keep it at 100% and to keep it relatively fair. Mm. That's the goal of the assessor, although many assessors can't reach that without revaluation. Gotcha. All right, let me ask you this. When can you complain or grieve your taxes? When, when can you do that? You can complain whenever you want, but <laughs> when can you have something done about it? Uh, the official grievance period for all Westchester towns is in June, from June 1st to the third Tuesday of June. City of White Plains is January 1st. That's a holiday, January 2nd to January 21st. Uh, and then Yonkers has a unique uh, period as well, the 1st of November to mid-November, the 15th. Uh, so for most municipalities, including all towns and most cities, excluding Yonkers and um, uh, White Plains, it's a June 1st to the 3rd Tuesday of June grievance window. Wow. The third Tuesday of June is known as Grievance Day. That's the day the Board of Assessment Review meets and to collect information. Most people don't appear or need to appear, but the deadline to have the documentation and the uh, grievance application in is that day. I know that right before these dates, the June date that you're talking about comes up, I must get my company gets 15, 20 calls from people in the neighborhood that wants me to do a BPO or CMA and they're trying to rush down to the town and they're saying they're paying too much taxes. Well, they, they've been paying too much taxes through the whole year. Don't wait till a week before and expect that to happen. I can imagine that you're starting to get extremely busy right now. Yes, this is uh, what's tantamount to uh, an accountant just prior to April 15th. I call it my tax season as well. Um, and it does get very busy and people, you know, human nature will will cause people to wait until the last minute and there are times when I have to turn people away uh, because I simply don't have time to adequately service my clients. Uh, so if in fact people are interested in challenging their assessment and, and believe that they're over assessed, they should try to take a look at it now so as to determine whether they wish to go forward or wish to have me or somebody else represent them going forward. That, listen, Rich knows his business. Uh, I want to say now, I'm reading this off of his website. In fact, he has a tremendous website. It either posted at the beginning of the opening credits or it will post at the end. But this is what he says on his website. Best of all, there are no risks to you. After a preliminary review at no charge, if you don't have a valid case, I won't waste your time. This is true. This is true. There are plenty of properties that are under assessed, and I still get those phone calls, people wanting to know where they stand. Tax rates go up because budgets go up. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean the assessment is unfair. There's definitely a difference between unfair and expensive. Your taxes can be expensive to you, but they're not necessarily unfair. So uh, I'm happy to check the assessment of any property owner in Westchester, Rockland, or Putnam, and let them know whether we believe that your assessment can be reduced. Well, I certainly know that Gail, my, my, the, the boss of me, Gail Delane, had, and her and Rich go way back, and she's always calling, and we're dealing with a lot of different properties, and, and, and she'll just say, Rich, here's the property. Let me give you the, lot, the section block and lot and what, it's, what, he, what we know about it. And I'm not saying he's getting back to me right away, but he will get back and say, Greg, you know what? The house is uh, being taxed at five and a quarter. And right now, uh, if the people can get three and a quarter, they're doing great. So that doesn't mean that automatically you're going to get 200000 off your taxes, but he, he will get back to you and give you some information. Yeah, I usually will get back within 24 hours. Um, you know, sometimes, especially this time of year, it might take a little bit longer. But with a little bit of information, I can normally come to a conclusion. Or the appraisers that I work with will help me come to a conclusion of market value. Uh, again, it is subjective, and, and, and there are times when I tell people you don't have a case, 
but understand that's our opinion and you should feel free to check elsewhere because it's subjective yes but um, normally we are able to come to a pretty good estimation as to whether the property uh, is a candidate to have the assessment reduced now I'm reading this also off of his website and we have some other questions something important to talk about in just a minute and we will be talking about the star but before that I want to read this and if we go forward with your case I promise no tax reduction, no fee. You have nothing to lose and perhaps thousands to gain. So, I promise no tax reduction, no fee. This is true. Um, it's strictly on a contingency basis. See? And, uh, you know, people sometimes are wary. Uh, even as an assessor, people would approach me and they would be very cautious. They think something bad can happen. So, beyond the fact that there's no risk involved with my service, uh, the assessment can never be raised by this process. The Board of Assessment Review and the court can do two things. They can reduce it or they can deny it. Having your grievance denied is your worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. I've yet to have that experience. Uh, I forget this name of this movie me and my wife love to watch uh, anyway, but it's a, a movie when the guy comes in and the lady starts screaming, tax man, tax man. I forget, <laughs> I forget the name of the movie, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right, now, here's what we need to ask. Big, big question here. The new changes to the STAR. What's going on with the STAR program? Greg, for the very first time, the basic STAR, this is the exemption that's available to all one, two, and three family homeowners, uh, owner-occupied homeowners, as well as condominiums and co-ops. For the very first time, the STAR exemption, the basic STAR exemption, is changing in that it is now based on income. Uh, people with household incomes of $500,000 or more are no longer entitled to the STAR exemption, and the state will automatically notify the assessor of those people who are not going to be receiving it. Uh, they will receive letters from their local assessor saying that you are uh, no longer eligible due to your household income. And by the way, household in, um, the definition of income is adjusted gross, uh, adjusted gross income minus your taxable IRA distributions. If in fact that number is 500000 or more, you're no longer entitled to the SAR exemption. Uh, so if you're in that income category and you get the letter, so be it. That's the law you're no longer entitled. But what is going to happen now is that when the assessor's records have been merged with the records of the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance, there have been thousands of uh, mismatches. If there's a bad Social Security number, somebody filed their tax return late, perhaps a divorce, uh, many, many circumstances will uh, cause the state to say, you are undetermined. So even if your income is far, far below 500, which is most people, they may very well get a letter from the assessor, and it's extremely important they react to that letter. Because what they're saying is, is, is that we can't determine whether you're in the category which could, should continue to receive the exemption. So you need to, to do exactly what the letter says, bring your tax return to the assessor so he or she can know that you shouldn't be removed. So if anybody receives a letter in the last month or two or the next month or two from the assessor's office, it's extremely important because you could lose your exemption if you fail to act on that. I, I Listen, uh, this is important because you know you take stuff and you put it away and then don't deal with it till you look up and your taxes have jumped. Uh, why did they come up with 500000 It sounds like the capital gains tax. I, I don't know. I don't know. In this economy, they're, you know, they're choosing to uh, uh, you know, restrict higher income people from benefits or, or whatever. So that's the decision of the legislature. But it's the local officials who have to administer it. And uh, many of my for former colleagues are struggling right now with this very difficult process. Um, uh, this is a busy season for assessors as well. And for them to be... Um, handed this huge program and have to administer it. I know they're going to do a wonderful job, but it's important that the taxpayers know that if you get a letter from the assessor's office, mm -hmm. or you have, you immediately should check that so as to be sure that you're not going to miss out on your STAR exemption simply because there's a middle initial on your tax return, whereas in the uh, local records there's no middle initial. That might bounce you out. There's a lot of reasons you could be bounced out and therefore be vulnerable mm -hmm. to having your exemption removed. So. We 
When you said your former colleagues are uh, having problems with it, you're talking about the people that work at the tax. You're not talking about your rich millionaire friends that don't have to pay. No, I'm talking about my <laughs> colleagues being all the other fellow uh, assessors. I'm just, I'm uh, you know, as you know, I'm a, a, a uh, retired assessor, uh, yes. and that's my website. And all of this information, by the way, is on my website, retiredassessor.com. Uh, so it's critical, uh, especially at this time of year, people pay attention because they're at risk of potentially losing their star exemption, even if they shouldn't be losing it. I, I want to say this to uh, my folks out there. The ones that are going to try to contact me two weeks before June, www.retiredassessors.com. Singular assessor. Assessor. Retiredassessor.com. Please go to that website. Rich great guy he will take care of what he can for you uh you don't need to bombard realtors f uh, two weeks before you if you're watching this show right now and you're questioning your taxes go to that website right now pull up his information and and get some help now don't don't wait till the last minute uh, greg the website also has a property profile you can simply complete the profile. It will email to my um, my address, and I will then be able to tell whether you are overassessed or not. Um, you don't have to call me or give me information. I'm, I'm happy to speak with you, but there's a mechanism on the website that will allow you to complete uh, information about your property so as we can determine whether you might be a candidate for reduction. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Guys, listen, this is why I have this show, and this is why I have people on the show that you know try to help people you got to you got to stay on top of this you got to take care of that uh rich has been in the business years he knows what he's talking about and yesterday i went and changed my oil and my truck and i didn't change the oil i took it to valve uh, what is it valve line valve valve whatever that place is and i paid 89 not that i don't know how to change oil but I took my truck over there and had them do it for $79 and had some synthetic oil put in there. And it's the same thing with this. That was going to be my next question. Can anybody grieve their own taxes? Absolutely, Greg. Uh, the property taxes are, are uh, certainly subjective. They are, uh, assessments are subjective. And each year, a public notice goes in the newspaper suggesting that anybody who has an issue with their assessment should come down during the period we mentioned earlier. Again, that information is on the website, uh, the grievance periods, so as to challenge the assessment. But, but I think you have a good analogy. Uh, people are entitled to, and some people certainly do, but most people have representation uh, because they prefer not to have to go through the grievance process and potentially go to court, which is, you know, in my experience, probably necessary about 70% of the time. Mm. Um, but people can absolutely do it on their own. No, not, not for me. If I ever have my taxes grieved, uh, Richard, you will be doing it. I don't need my blood pressure going up anymore. <laughs> I don't want... See, you talk the same language they talk down there. They could say something to me down there that... Uh, and all I want to do is get my taxes reduced. And it's not that simple. So uh, I certainly would call on you. I, I have no business... To, my wife wouldn't let me go down there and try to do that. She, I, the boss of me... Where is she? The boss of me will not allow me to go down there and try to argue out my point. Uh, that's not what I'm here for. And that's why guys like you are around. If you win a reduction, when does it start? Uh, we'll talk about the the, uh, the assessment of... calendar for Westchester towns for the moment. Okay. Uh, because that is most areas in Westchester are, are town calendars. The grievance is filed in June by the third Tuesday, as I mentioned. The Board of Assessment Review will issue their decision on September 15th. If uh, you, the homeowner, or me as a representative are happy with the outcome, nothing further need be done, and in most towns, the tax savings begins the following April. If you're unhappy with the outcome, then you file a petition with the court known as Small Claims Assessment Review, a state Supreme Court matter, uh, and that has to be filed between September 15th and the uh, October 15th, and then you'll be given a hearing date for um, uh, the, the disposition of that case. Uh, it doesn't affect the tax savings date, which is the following April. There's a couple of exceptions, such as Harrison, have a little uh, unique ca calendar for taxes. But in most places, the June grievance period of 2011 will affect taxes payable starting April 2012. There are times when the hearing date is uh, so delayed because of the volume of cases that the hearing will be held after April. It doesn't make a difference because the taxpayer will be made whole retroactive by virtue of refunds. 
So that's the calendar in Westchester Towns, the City of White Plains, the January grievance deadline, the 21st. Uh, White Plains issues their decision on March 1st, a much shorter window, and the tax savings begins in April. But again, the court proceeding that will follow, perhaps, will be after April, and therefore taxpayers will be made whole retroactively. Okay. There are a couple of other unique calendars, such as all villages in Westchester County have a February grievance period. and um, Like the village of Elmsford? Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, Irvington? Correct. Those calendars uh, mean that most people in those villages, if they're overassessed, need to apply in the village in February and the town in June. Okay. Many of my clients are... Uh, in that category where they have to file in both jurisdictions. If I have a new client in, in May, then I file the town first in June and the, and the village the following year, or vice versa, depending upon when the, uh, the client uh, signs up with me. You know, uh, a lot of homes that I'm putting on the market are, uh, and a lot of the other real estate professionals, they put these homes on the market. And the biggest mistake the realtors make is that they don't go down and get the correct taxes of the property. The property could have a senior uh, exemption on it, veterans exemption. They have all these different things on it and they think the taxes are $9,800. You get to the closing table and these older people that you're selling this home from has so many different things on there that the taxes are actually $13,000. Uh, that is a big mistake that people make and I, I hope that all realtors know to go down to the town to speak to everybody and find out exactly what's owed on the property. Uh, a lot of the homeowners that I try to represent now, given that it is now a buyer's market and what has happened in this industry with, uh, and I don't never want to say the banks caused all of the problems, but they caused 80% of it with the subprime lending that fell apart. A lot of people need to grieve their taxes because the biggest problem with a uh, young family buying a home if the taxes are fifteen thousand a year, that's that that'll change your mortgage tremendously. And a lot of these homeowners need to to grieve, to put them in some kind of fair position for the people coming in to buy the home. You know. Well, I agree. I think that when you're listing a home or whether you're purchasing a home, it's the ideal or refinancing. It's the ideal time to try to find out whether you're overassessed. Yeah. A lot of my clients are sellers looking to be proactive in this regard in order to make the home more saleable. The calendar I just mentioned would mean that in most cases uh, the sellers would not be there for the savings, but they still want to retain me because uh, they want to advertise the assessments being challenged, assuming that it is overassessed. If you're having, if you're being, if you're going to refinance and you're going to have an appraisal done, it's the ideal time to see whether or not you're overassessed, as well as if you're purchasing a home, etc. Uh, it is um, relatively simple for me to look at it at that point and let the the taxpayer know whether they can save. Rich, uh, <clears throat> we were speaking a little bit before the show. Are, are you available? Not now, because I know you're getting ready to get into the crazy part of what you do, but are you available to come to some of the real estate companies and share with the uh, realtors some of your experience? Sure, sure. I um, I do uh, presentations probably two times a week, sometimes three times a week in various real estate offices. Uh, I think that many realtors are, are anxious to learn mm -hmm. about this, this part of their business. It's very much a part of their business. And um, I think many people consider it to be um, you know, intimidating. It involves a little math, a little bureaucracy, two things that people usually run from. Uh, but I think that with a little time um, I can spend with them, they have a better understanding of the overall process, and I'm always happy to do that. Did you hear that, folks? A lot of people run from math and bu bu bureaucracy. Rich runs right towards it. He <laughs> runs towards that big ball of confusion. He runs and dives right in it with his pen and pencil and takes care of things. I think that, you know, our new office, our new company, uh, Next Stage Metropolitan Realty, we will certainly have, we only have lunch to, 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 to pay you with, Rich. We'll, we'll serve you a good lunch. I eat lunch. You, you can come in and speak to the realtors and give them some information. Because in this business, every day I find out how much I don't know. Uh, it is amazing that uh, 
I, the boss of me, my wife, I keep speaking of Gail, allows me out in the field to shake hands and kiss babies and do what a politician kind of does. But the, the back office that what she does is uh, amazing. And I, you know, I admire, I admire people that can sit here and fool with the numbers. I, I think I have uh, my attention span doesn't last that long. I got to get out in my truck. I got to go put a sign up. I got to shake a hand. Uh, I couldn't do what you do, Greg. So <laughs> that's how it works. Well, all right. One more time before, and we got a couple of minutes left. Uh, I want you to go over this star thing one more time, unless there's something else that you want to speak about. But we got about two minutes left, and I'd like you to bring up that star, unless there's something else you want to speak of. I, I think it is important. I'm glad you mentioned it again, Greg, is because um, uh, people right now don't realize that they may be at risk for losing their basic star exemptions simply because of a glitch. Uh, the assessors are working very hard to notify people who are in the category of undetermined. And it doesn't matter if your income is $50,000 a year or $450,000 a year. If you get a letter saying you are in the undetermined category, you must go to the assessor's office or call the assessor and learn about what has to happen. The letter will give you instructions. But if you miss the deadline for that process, whether it be uh, May 1 or June 1, check your local jurisdiction. If you miss the deadline to prove that you, were in fact, are eligible, and clearly eligible, then you're out of luck. Uh, and it's not the assessor's fault. They're trying very hard to tackle this, but there have been so many properties, thousands and thousands countywide, I believe, where for whatever reason, the state has determined these people to be in the undetermined class, even though their income is, is well, well below the income cap of 500000 So keep an eye out for that letter from the assessor. It could cost you a lot if you don't. Have the letters already started coming out? Yes. Yeah, some jurisdictions have sent them. Some are preparing them as we speak. Uh, what about Parkway Homes? in Greenberg. Have they come out in my I, area? I believe, now just from chatting with uh, the people in Greenberg Town Hall, I believe the Greenberg letters have been sent, but perhaps they've been sent in increments. I don't know, so I don't want to be quoted as saying you should have had it by now. Just double check to make sure that your exemption is safe because this is the very first time this, this has occurred. Well, Rich, thank you so much. My show goes quickly. Again, what's your website? www.retiredassessor.com Rich, thank you so much. Thank You've been you, Greg. very informative. Thank I hope you. everybody gets some information from this, and uh, I'll have you back on the show when I get my uh, uh, undetermined. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, thanks yeah. again. Thank you.